Hello, people. How's it going? Do, 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 do. Do. All right. I kind of feel like music today. I'm gonna take a minute and put that in action. This playlist is usually pretty good, so I'll go with this. Let me look at the bug list. I'll um I'll write these down on the notes here so that you all know how we're doing. Okay. Hello, PD codes. How's it going? So there's our seven bugs. All right, I want to track down this first one. Where is that? That's under, I think that's under the buffer abstract stuff actually before I do all this let me do something else real quick emac is behaving strangely today I can feel it already so I'm not gonna keep this stuff here because I feel like it's gonna crash and then I'm not gonna have it That's weird that it kept them blue in a text file, but okay, I'll deal with that. Okay. Now, um, I want to track down T, yes, okay, so right here is where I take a tab and I write out that and I write out this
in general, people don't seem to be a fan of this, so... Um, That happens either way. And then show slash T. Port X port Y, scroll X scroll Y. Raft with height with advancement, yeah. So that'll clear that to zero, and then I'll make that an option someday that I can toggle for me. That actually reminds me, there's another bug not on this list, so I'm going to add it to my personal list, and then I'll add it up there. First of all, does this work? Oh, right, I changed the name of it. So, Okay. Let's give it a whirl. That's also not noted, so let me write that down real quick. Screen doesn't draw a paint on open. Is my screen flickering for everybody? Or uh, it looked like on OBS it was flickering really weird just there. Um, but I'm not sure if that's real or if that's just like what I'm seeing. Anyway, um, it appears that, ooh, that's not good. Okay, so the cursor is disappearing. That's what, there are tabs right here, and when I go to the left, the cursor is disappearing. Okay, so PD Codes is saying no flicker. Yeah, it looks like no flicker for everybody so it's just me seeing flicker on OBS okay so about this cursor situation it looks like I at least have to write a space character so that the cursor has a spot to highlight render item item I space
There we go. That's the behavior I was looking for. Okay. I'll keep a record of which ones I've completed with like a checkbox system maybe. That's part of the fun of it to do this, is showing progress. Smoothness on smooth scrolling. Alright, so first I need to examine that a little bit. Remind myself of what it looks like and then take a crack at it. I suspect that it was something like um, it's rounding to an integer amount when it's locating them. Yeah, like that U isn't even in the right spot now. really dumb. Okay, let's take a look. Um, <laughs> Not sure. Okay, um, rendering, so I want to look at, that was in the private draw glyph section right here. What a debugger can't do right now, that would be really nice, is to say, I want to collect all of the, like, I want to keep track of this value. I, I want to like for, in this case, for example, I have a function. And every time it gets called, I want to save the value of y, and then I want to like have a breakpoint that says at the end of a frame, stop. And let me look at all of those values, right? And I could do that as like printing stuff out, but that's really weird and slow. I, and I don't want to write the code in to do that. I want to in the debugger like a breakpoint to insert something that just says log these things. But people don't add features to debuggers for some reason. I think that's like a million features you could add to a debugger. I don't really understand. Maybe they're trying to keep them simple, I guess. Not sure. Like, I don't want to complicate the interface, maybe.
Okay, so I want to take a quick look at Y shift. Y minus Y shift was whatever I was passed originally. 53. I'm going to save 53.f. There we go. Now I would like to also take a look at character. Alright, what is the next thing that comes in? Oops, okay, so condition character or character equals the N after the U. Okay, so it's saying that those are at the same exact Y position. What I should do next is when I'm looking at them, I want to examine the, uh, the values I get in Q. Specifically Y0 and Y1. I want to examine them at this position, not at this position. Fifty six sixty five, fifty six sixty five. Huh. So it's giving me the same Y0, Y1 coordinates for both of these characters. They don't really look like they're aligned, even just stationary, but they might be. I don't, I don't know, like, that U looks like it's one pixel too high, doesn't it? It's like the only character that looks like that though, which is annoying. Cause I don't see any, um, I don't see any good ways of figuring out what's going on differently with you. I mean, what's char data you, I guess? Y0 of 1, Y0 of 1, Y1 of 20, Y1 of 20. 
y off or x off y off is negative eight negative nine um, y off two is negative well that's kind of interesting right I mean that's a one off thing between the two of them let me look at another character at a similar size Yeah, this agrees with the N. I mean, it also, the Y off 2 appears to agree with the U and not the N. But. I wonder if I need to add in a little bit more somewhere that I'm not aware of. But. Like, all the capital letters line up correctly, right? At least when I'm not scrolling, they look like they do. Okay, so that looks like it's measuring the top and the bottom of the character. And the top of U is lower than the top of N. That seems irrelevant, kind of. Uh, someone's asking what the problem is with the U, or that they're saying they can't see the U, and they're asking which one it is, but if you look at this U, it looks kind of off to me. Um, if you give me a sec. There we go. I zoom way in. Well, it actually is lined up with the bottom of the N in reality, but it's not lined up with the bottom of the O and the C, which is kind of weird. Because when I'm zoomed out, those look like they line up. Those are all in a straight line, and E, C, O, dip underneath. I guess it's lined up. It just looks like it's off, though, doesn't it? Like, it looks like it's a little brighter up here than it should be. That's much brighter than any of the other characters of the same height. Yeah, it might just be that the font's a little screwy. It could definitely be that. Um, it's just Arial, so... It looks so off right here. It's weird. I mean, it looks like it's one pixel too tall is what it looks like. Even if just the top part of the U was dimmed more, right? If it was like... If this color here was present on this smaller Q, 
here, here. It's not drawing anything. Here, 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 and here, right? That would look better to me. So you're saying the Y looks high as well. Yeah, the Y does look a little too tall, doesn't it? Now, one thing that's weird is if I look at the... Don't save. If I look at this again. The U clearly has a Y off that shouldn't it looks like it's kind of supposed to be correcting this a little bit like it should be down from everything else by about 50% of a pixel like as compared to n for instance and yet if i look at this is the output of well, let me look at the whole queue all right so this is for an n let me go until I find the um, a U though. Okay, so for U, it's got and S and T are the X and Y of the texture. So T zero T one Y one and Y zero are all relevant, right? And if I look at the next thing, this is an N. You can see it hasn't changed any of the T's or Y's at all. It's the exact same Q. I mean, the Y I put in is the same. But I would expect that the... That those, X, those Y offs should be making it different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk into this function here, right? Back that up. Okay, well we're stepping into the stbttf function again, so bear with me as I figure it out. This isn't even the main problem, this is a side thing. The main thing I wanna look into is why the smooth scrolling looks like it's rounding to integers uh, instead of being smooth like it's supposed to be, but I also noticed that this looked a tiny bit off, so I want to look at it. Um, draw data, right, character index, boom, so I get B, and this is the one for N, good. Align to integer. Why is that set to one? Who said align to integer? There's a parameter called align to integer set to one. Okay, 2478. Wait, no, not 2478. Wherever I called get packed quad, that's probably the problem right there. That looks much better. Yeah, the scrolling is fixed too. Yep, yep, that's it. Very nice. And that is why I love being able to step through code in another person's library, because you're never going to remember what that true or that one at the end of the function does, unless you look at the docs, unless you can look at the code. Okay. So that settles that. Um,
control left, control right, stop spots. Okay, so this is a whole big thing that I've been struggling with for a while. It's an interesting sort of issue. And the question is how you want, say, there's, I have a, I have a number of different um, control left, control right schemes where it's like, oh, seek to a token or seek to the end of an alphanumeric sequence, seek to the alphanumeric sequence or to the a, a camel case word. So basically the way I think about it is you treat um, the text as having two kinds. There's there's parts of the text that make up words and in this case for example in Emacs all of the alphanumeric things make up words and then what you want to do is you want to set it up so that you, you, you sort of have different options for what you treat as a words and what you don't. So you might treat a token as a word, you might treat white space as words, um, etc. Uh, separating words, right? And anything that's not a word you just ignore. So you can see like this parenthesis, it won't ever stop on parentheses the way it does with other things. If those, if the parenthesis and equal here were spaces, it would behave exactly the same way. So those aren't a part of words in this particular system, right? And I have one that acts like that. But the question is, once you know where the words are, where do you stop? For example, if I'm right here and I seek to the right, Emacs goes all the way to there. Um, whereas if I'm, you know, up here, does it do that? Yes, it does that pretty much anywhere. Un until I'm already there, then it seeks to the next position. Now, if I'm seeking to the left, it stops at different spots, right? So, there's a question of, if I'm seeking to the right, I end here, and if I'm seeking to the left, I end here. Do I want to end in the same spot every time, no matter what? Or do I want to end here? And the reason you might want to do it the Emacs way is you can do things that are, ni that are nice here, like deleting one word at a time, right? Um, it has some nice properties that way. Um, and I think what mine does right now is not quite right for this. It'll seek one too far to the left or something. So first I want to take a look at which, um, which thing I'm treating as words and figure out where my stop spots are and, and figure out once and for all the rule I want to follow and make sure that all of my different control left, control right, seeker, type commands are working correctly. Okay. So first I'm going to look at my custom file where I have this stuff bound and I want to look at control codes. Oh, to the way around. Codes. Right. Okay. I'm doing seek alphanumeric or camel right seek alphanumeric with camel left okay so let's take a look at that okay so if I'm on let me make a list of the different things it does I'm on the word in the middle of the word it's, uh, it just did a seek to the beginning of the next word. So, using that logic, what I could do is, if I was on the beginning of the word, and then I did this, I could delete the whole word and everything in between. I kind of like that. So, it seems to be seeking... Now, there's maybe a problem with this scheme. Is if I'm at the end of a line and I do boom, then you have to do something like that. I think that's fine. I think I like this system... Mm, it's hard to say. Now, seeking to the left is definitely screwy. Um, it seems to be seeking... Okay, there it's stopped on the capital. So it seems to be stopping on capitals, but then on non-capitals it's going one too far. So that right there just went to the beginning of the next thing. Alright, so if I'm in white space, it's going to the beginning of the next thing, which is not necessarily great either. Yeah, that's like always going to the beginning of the next thing, and then this is going to 
one before the beginning of the next thing. I think I wanted to stop right at the beginning of things and right after the end of things, right? Like, I want it to be so that if I start here and go boom, I would still have the space, I believe. It's just, and the reason for that is like here, when you do here to boom, that's going to consume the new line. You probably don't actually want to consume the new line. So, yes. I want to take a look at what the other ones are doing too. So, there's already a, a slightly unrelated bug in the camel case version because it's stopping differently for camel cases versus non-camel case things, which is not supposed to be doing. But let me look at um, other things of a similar nature. Seek alphanumeric. We're going to do just alphanumerics now. Let's see how that one looks. That's also stopping at the beginning of alphanumerics when I do that. So I want to change that because that's just going to the beginning of the next alphanumeric. And so when I'm seeking to the right, I want it to go to the ends of things, right? When you seek to the right, stop at ends. When you seek to the left, stop at beginnings. Is kind of what I'm thinking. I mean, that's what Emacs does. Yeah, this is doing one past beginnings too. Which is not really ideal. Okay. Got it. Okay. So we're going to be systematic about this. Make sure I get all of the different things. I'm going to start by making a sub list of each individual type so there's um white space how does it deal with arrow down when on the end of the row. Does the cursor go under the current or jump to the end of the line below? I'm not sure what you mean by does the cursor go under the current. It jumps to the end of the line below or it like it keeps the same X position basically. I'll show you. So there's white space left right, there's um, token left right, which is not particularly useful. There's white or token left right, which is the more useful one that involves tokens. There's alphanumeric left right, which is kind of what uh, Emacs has going on. And then there's alpha numeric or camel left right okay we're gonna visit all five of these make each one of them good okay so I'll show you what down does real quick find a good example okay that's up down. If you want to go to the end of the line, you just hit end, so it's not like. Depends on where the preferred X position of the cursor is, basically.
Okay. So. Yeah, it's pretty common. That's pretty standard up down behavior. Um, white space right, white space left. Okay. Here we go. Okay, that stopped at the end. Okay, that's behaving pretty much exactly the way I would want it to. So this one is actually following the right rules. I mean, as much as in as much as uh, white space seeking can be useful, it's pretty useful. Okay. Do, 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 to do. Uh, yeah, the white space left right seek skips to the closest white space. There's a lot of different options for left right seeking, so I'm going through each of them. Token right, token left. This one is a bit useless because it treats a one whole comment as a token, which isn't usually what you want to jump over. But if I come in here, yes, that's behaving as I would want. Jumping over small tokens is annoying to me, but if you're okay if you're like into the precision of token jumping, then it works pretty well. <laughs> What's Pascal case jumping, Cuber Caleb? I'm not sure I'm familiar with Pascal case. Or I'm probably familiar with it, I'm just not sure what the term means. Okay, so that's working how I want it to. So that's good. The first, the early ones were set up correctly. Let's look at white or token. Uh, yeah, I call that alphanumeric or camel. Uh, left or right. Keep it, Caleb. Okay, so this is white space or token. So, yeah, that's working. Beginning of white space stuff, beginning of token stuff. Good. Oh, that was a little weird. Was, was that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Keeper Caleb, you can do whatever you want, like, um, you have to bind the one thing at a time, obviously, but there's nothing to stop you from having all of these things bound to different things. If you want to be, like, Master Foo jumping around and skip this whole comment and then precision go through this token and get exactly the thing I want, it's totally possible. Um, yes. It can also be used for cool things like token seek, left and right could be used for things like 
delete one whole comment at a time, right? So like you would have the ability to write a thing where you just put your cursor right here and then you hit one key, it seeks the beginning of the token, sets the mark, seeks the end of the token, deletes in the range, right? Comment killed. So yeah, it's kind of useful in some ways. Um, anyways, if I go back to my to-do, whoops, do, 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 do. okay, so white ore token, it looks like is working as well. So it's just these newer alphanumeric seeks that I kind of fudged up a little bit, I think. Alphanumeric right, alphanumeric left. Whoops, whoops. That's not what I wanted. Ah, yeah. What is this? Emacs, stop being crazy. Okay. Oh, man, I hate it when that stuff happens. Okay. Alright. Yeah, so that one's seeking one spot too far to the right. I want it... Well, it's not just one spot too far to the right. It's not stopping. This, for example, should stop on the curly brace. It stops all the way at the beginning of the next thing. And when I seek backwards, it seeks to one before that thing, which is really not useful. So let's take a look at that one. Not sure where. I'm definitely under four at CPP somewhere. Alpha numeric right. Okay. Seek alpha numeric right. Seek alpha numeric left. So those are under abstracts then. In the buffer. Um. Buffer seek alpha numeric right. There we go. I have to remind myself, remind myself how some of this streaming code works, but it looks like I initialize a loop struct here, saying where I want to go and where I want to end, and then I say at each step I look at the um, the loop which has the standard interface to tell me the absolute position where it is, and the amount of stuff in this stage of the loop, and it also has a thing that tells us got this data pointer that you know I can. offset so that the absolute positions work. Um, so that's what I do and then I loop across that using absolute positions. Is alphanumeric true? So the idea here is if it's not alphanumeric then it goes until it finds an alphanumeric I want it to stop there. So this looks like it should work. While it is alphanumeric. Oh, wait. This is alphanumeric. I think these are backwards, maybe? So go, and then once you find something that's alphanumeric true, go to here, and then 
keep going, and once you find something that's not alphanumeric true, end right there. I think that's the logic that I wanted to use, right? Perfect. So the right seek is correct now. Exactly matching the behavior of Emacs, actually. But left seek is still broken, so let's take a look at that one. Okay, so what this one does is it says, first of all, wherever we are, this is how they usually work when you're seeking to the left, step back one. Then keep going backwards until you find an alphanumeric. Stop. Go to the next part. Then keep going backwards until you find something that's non-alphanumeric. And then step forward one. Seems like it should work, right? I see it. Yeah, that feels pretty good. That's what I wanted to do. Alphanumeric left right now, just the camel case version. Here it is. Alright, so camel right is oops, I went past it actually. It's right here. scrap this because this doesn't make any sense. What I'm going to do instead is pop up here to alphanumeric right and basically start with a copy of that and tweak it. to undo that because now I understand a little better. I 
I don't want to change the interface if I don't have to. So the idea was, okay, how does this command work? First you do alphanumeric left, and then you do alphanumeric or camel left, where you basically are saying, here's where the alphanumeric thing is stopped. You go only go this far. Okay. So and position is where we will stop unless we find a camel case reason to stop, basically. And then we do string phi loop. see something because I've changed the alphanumeric seek so it might actually be different yeah uh, Softortive is saying that the API would be cleaner if I wasn't using the alphanumeric position system if I just probably wrote one single function that worked the same way as alphanumeric uh, right but it did took into account both things um, I could clean up the API there. It doesn't really. It wouldn't really hurt to clean that up. I wanted to at the time. I think my main concern was to not duplicate a bunch of code, right? But I could definitely achieve that while also cleaning up the API a little bit, which wouldn't isn't a bad suggestion. Now I need to find a camel case to seek on. Okay, did I not recompile with the custom? Yeah, it looks like maybe the... The camel case logic is actually correct. It was just the alphanumeric seeking logic that was messing that up. Okay, so let me um, clean that up a little bit. Yes. Now my question for myself is, do I use these anywhere else? Okay, so what I want to do is buffer C go from there. I also want to keep them. I don't actually want to just make one function that collapses all of it into one, uh, because then. Um, Then if I ever get in a case where I want to optimize out um, seeking something twice, for example, I can't if I have done that. But in this case, it looks like I don't actually need all of this. 
extra stuff. I can just do this in there. Int and position equals buffer seek alphanumeric. Well, I'm doing the left one right now, but that's fine. Left int and position. This just wants the buffer pointer. This just wants position. This wants position and position. Return result. So there we go. I think that's a little nicer. And if I go to my to do, boom. Okay. So the stop spot situation is resolved. And it sounds like I'm out of music. This is always the hard part because I don't really like spending tons of time on music search, but I also kind of get annoyed by not having it when I'm in the mood for it. Uh -huh. What to do? Well, here's an idea. Alright, so we just finished this bug. I'm going to cross it off on my list here. And then I'm going to stop the stream for a minute and restart. Because if I play one gigantic stream and lots of music on that stream, it'll be banned everywhere. But if I break it up, then random parts get banned in different places. And so it's a little better. Um, and let me cross this off here. And let me restart the stream. I'll be back in just a minute.